guys have seen automated proofs before or like like computerized proofs before lean proofs basically what do you mean yeah uh, have any of you seen either lean or clock yeah that's pretty good anyone else I'm assuming that's a no. So I'm assuming most of you are like new to computerized proofs. So there's a couple of things I could do. I could, so I want to demonstrate some code at some point. Uh, there are various levels of code I could demonstrate. Uh, I could start with the natural number game, if any of you have heard of it. If not, it's basically about like proving facts about natural numbers, like pretty straightforward facts, like the fact that, I don't know. Uh, so I think, so like commutativity of addition, for example. Uh, so it's like not a very trivial fact actually like proving that addition is commutative is slightly tricky uh so you would like need a couple of intermediate steps to get there so we could like discuss that and like play the natural number game uh wherever it is hosted or I could do something slightly more advanced, like, uh, I don't know, uh, play. Uh, so we could do some, we could do some, uh, like, we could do some files from formalizing mathematics, which is like, a course thingy that Kevin Buzzard pub published. It's like at a slightly higher level than like the natural number game. Or you could, these, these are like more math oriented. Otherwise I could also do some of my uh, presets from uh, formal verification about uh, uh for formally verifying computer programs uh these would showcase a little bit more of uh the automation techniques but the uh these files would be like more distant from uh more distant from mathematics and more related to uh like more closely related to uh programming stuff Mm, so, has my accent I changed? I think it's was like an maybe. Uh, okay, I guess we should start with the natural number game. That seems like a fine thing to start with. Hey, what uh, is the natural number game? Uh, good question. Let me show you. Uh, should open a new window. Uh, let me, yes, uh, let's start with the tutorial world. Uh, there's a bunch of text on the screen. Also, I'll, I, sh I should share the link if you want to do it yourself. Uh, right. So the national number game uses uh, this language called lean, where you can like write proofs using code and like the computer knows how to check these proofs and it will yell at you if your proof is not correct. 
or like your proof is not sound. So like it knows some things about natural numbers. So it has some definition of natural numbers inside it. So natural numbers are defined as either zero or the successor of a natural number. In it. So <laughs> I guess I could talk a bit more about type theory if you're interested, like how things like natural numbers are defined. So natural numbers are defined as being either zero or the successor of a natural number. And this structure like contains the smallest fixed point as in like, so any structure that supports these two things must have like an element zero and an element successor of zero and an element successor of successor of zero and so on. So any such structure is guaranteed to contain all the natural numbers, but there are structures that are, as in, if you are also like forced that these things be distinct, which we will. But this is not the only structure that contains all of these things. So you could like throw in more things. So you take the smallest fixed point. Uh, these are called inductive types. Shouldn't it be one the smallest fixed point? Uh, what? Shouldn't the smallest fixed point be one? Like natural start from one. Uh, no, it's the smallest fixed point that is created by this structure. So, thus, uh, the zero and the successor operation together induce a structure. This structure is called uh, the structure of nat algebras, or like natural number algebras. Which is basically like structure similar to natural numbers. So there are many such structures. Like, so two examples of such structures would be the natural numbers and the co-natural numbers, which is just like the natural numbers, but with an additional point called omega, which is who's which is its own successor. So the co-natural co numbers are the largest fixed point of this uh, structure in some sense. I could talk more about like type theory and what these things mean or like category theory, or I could like just go through the proof uh, or like go through the code and like do some demonstrations. Uh, anyone have any preferences? I think you should go for the demonstration. Uh, what? I can hear you. I think you should go for the demonstration. Oh. Sure. OK, so let's do the tutorial levels. Uh, yeah. Ooh, we solved level one. Uh, OK, maybe I should like show you what I is. There's like, so to enter proofs, you enter sequences of like commands, which are called tactics, which like, so all, all the proofs in Lee are backwards. So starting from here, you want to like, so this turnstile symbol separates your assumptions, which is like X, Y, and Z are natural numbers from your goal, which is like X times Y plus Z plus X times Y plus Z. And to turn your goal into something simpler, you can apply tactics which like modify your goal. Or in some cases like this, where it's trivial, it can also solve the goal completely. So let's go to the next level. These are just, so sometimes you have like hypotheses like these. Uh, so hypotheses are also like examples of assumptions. So X and Y are natural numbers and H is the hypothesis that Y equals X plus seven. And you can like rewrite it, I think. This is how it works. And now you can do reflexivity. Uh, before that, like these two sides are not exactly the same, at least until you apply the assumption H by rewriting. So you need to do that before using reflexivity. Uh, cool. Uh, if anyone has any questions, you can like stop me. I'll like go through the first few levels pretty fast because I think there is not too much to talk about these. 
Uh, but if you have any questions, you should feel free to interrupt me. Oh, uh, can you please zoom in a bit this page? Uh, sure. Uh, is this better? Can you uh, tell yeah. about the rewrite function? Uh, so rewrite just so this was our original state. So we had the hypothesis that y equals x plus seven, and we wanted to prove that two times y equals two times x plus seven. So the simplest way to prove is prove this is like is replace this y by x plus seven, like do a substitution. Rewrite just does a substitution from an equality. That's all it does. You can also like rewrite the other way. So when you do this, uh, instead of substituting x plus seven in, in place of y, it substitutes y in place of x plus seven on the other side. So you can use this symbol to change the directionality of the rewrite. Uh, okay, move on. Uh, talks a lot about penal actions, but I guess we are not talking about those today. So um, this is also a, a simple example of a rewrite, like rewrite H reflexivity. Ooh, we're done. So these are sort of definitional lemmas. So addition is defined by induction on the second argument, or like A plus B is defined by induction on B. So uh, we, by definition, have the fact that A plus 0 equals A, and A plus the successor of any number is the successor of, like A plus successor of D equals successor of A plus C. These are definitions. and. They are also like provided as uh, lemmas, uh, which you can like see on the left panel thingy. Nice GUI feature. Uh, okay, so here to apply the lemmas, you can like say rewrite at sub, which apply. And then you can uh, like, to rewrite add zero, which applies this and like replace. Uh, uh, I'll be back in like one second. Right. Uh, uh, wait, we are done with the tutorial level, so we can like proceed to the addition world. Uh, uh, did anyone have any questions about the tutorial level? Uh, I mean, I still don't get stop. what this is used for. Uh, this is used for proving stuff. Uh, like uh, so, uh, this is used for writing proofs that can be checked by the computer. Okay, so would you be showing some examples? Uh... Like we just showed how, like the basic tools that we, like the tactics that we use to like do basic operations that enable us to write proofs, like. To do a proof, you need to be able to like do substitutions and say that something is a reflexivity and things like that. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. Now let's we are moving on to more complicated stuff. So this level introduces induction because like addition is defined by induction on the right hand argument. You cannot uh, like you do not a priori know that zero plus n equals n. This is something you have to prove. And the only way you can like prove something like this is by induction on n. So I'll show you how to do an induction. You just say induction on n. And now you get two goals. One, one is the base case, which is 0 plus 0 equals 0, which is true by definition. And the other is uh, 
written minor.suck, which is like the uh, inductive step. So you have an inductive hypothesis, NIH, which says zero plus, uh, it's giving it some weird names, but basically says like if zero plus N equals N, now you have to show that zero plus successor of N is the successor of N, which we can show using like the two results we have. So let's quickly do the two things. Uh, rewrite at zero uh, and uh, reflexivity for the first part. And this is a uh, uh, rewrite at suck. Now we rewrite the induction hypothesis. Right. And, and finally, uh, th this is just a reflexivity, right? Uh, so there's some things you can do to make your things look cleaner. Like if you say induction N with M H M, then instead of like those weird variable names, you get like not more normal looking variable names. So, uh, Instead of NIH, you can just say HM and it doesn't change anything else. Like, cool. Any questions about how induction worked? I guess you should be familiar with induction at this point. So, I know what you mean. Uh, what? Yeah, like, uh, it does understand a bit. Sure. Uh, addition is associative. So what do you suggest we induct on for this problem? I will remind you that addition is defined by recursion on the second variable. I think we have to induct on B and C. Do you think we have to induct on both of them? Uh, yes. Interesting. Uh, let's just try inducting on C first. Let's see what happens. Induct C with uh, DHT. Uh, uh, I guess this is a small trick you can use, repeat, rewrite at zero. Uh, not written code in lean for a while, so I forgot how this works. But yeah, that worked. So that cleaned up the entire loop. When you say re repeat something, that just applies the, like this just says rewrite at zero as long as you can. So here it will like rewrite add zero here and like rewrite add zero. Uh, so the bracketing here is implicitly like a bracket around a plus b plus uh, zero. Like addition is by definite like implicitly left associative. So for left associative operators, like the parenthesization is like omitted when where it is redundant. But you can imagine there being a parentheses around a plus b. So this is like that plus zero. So it does a rewrite at zero there as well. And after that, because the things are equal, when you say repeat, it automatically checks for reflexivity after everything is applied. So you do not actually have to say uh, reflexivity after that. It automatically closes the code. OK, let's do repeat, rewrite, add sub because at zero worked so well. And we can now rewrite the hypotheses and reflexivity. Ooh, we are done. Looks like we didn't need to induct on B. Only induction on C sufficed. Uh, so why do you think uh, like only induction on C was enough. Uh, 
Uh, any comments? Or should I just move on? And due to the lemma, because we are seeing that uh, it was uh, associative tier with C. Uh, I'm sorry, I didn't quite get you. Could you speak a little louder? Can't hear anything, so I'll just proceed. Uh, right, this is like a sublemma you need to prove before proving commutativity, because let me just move to add pop. So, uh, I'll like let's try to prove that addition is commutative, and you'll see why we needed the previous level, which is like sub add, which is like add suck, but in the other direction. So like for add com, you obviously need to induct and which variable you induct on does not matter. So let's say in, we induct A with, uh, be creative with our names. Uh, what? Oh, sorry. Whoops, we need to. Prove that zero plus b equals b, but oh, we already have that. So cool. Uh, rewrite zero add add zero. Uh, sorry. Uh, and reflexivity. Cool. Now we need to show that. Successor of x plus b equals b plus successor of x. And we have to use x plus b equals b plus x. Whoops, we need to show that successor of x plus b is actually the successor of x plus b whole. So I guess we needed the previous level, uh, which also needs induction because uh, there's really no other way of going around the definition of ad addition because it's defined by induction on the second variable. So let's do this real quick. Done with the previous level, so now we can use suck add. Suck add, rewrite add suck, rewrite uh, hx reflexivity should work. Oh, that worked. Any questions? Uh, also. Do you guys want to keep keep on doing uh, more of the natural number game, or do you want to move on to some other proof stuff, or like more automated stuff? You could do some more levels. Like I could like speed run them or something. Uh, sure, let's do. Oh, it doesn't allow auto. Whoops. Let's see if it allows. It doesn't. Okay. Uh, 
I guess we'll do it the normal way. Sized. So, I guess I introduced some new facts in this uh, solution. So you're allowed to pass arguments to uh, like proofs of this form like these are you can think of these proofs as being functions from a, a, a and b to like a proof of the statement that a plus successor of b plus successor of a a plus b so you can like think of proofs as themselves being sort sort of like objects that you can like apply functions to or like that can be arguments of functions and in fact uh Functions from proofs to proofs are precisely implications. Uh, was all of that understood? I'm not getting any responses. I guess I could give you a demonstration of how that works. So you can uh see HP. this says apply h at b and that gives you an element of q which is what we want and uh sure i'll say it's x zero what oh Uh, oh, okay. This doesn't allow lambdas. So I'll get, I guess we'll do it this easy way. Uh, we could use the half tactic, but that's like a lot of characters, so I won't use that. Instead, we will like apply the functions directly. So we are applying h to p, j to h of p, and l to j of h of p. That gives us the thing thing we want. Uh, any feedback? <laughs> uh, do you guys want to keep doing more of this stuff, uh, or like? do other stuff. Wait. OK, this wants us to do it in the backward format. So I guess we can I'll demonstrate that. H P. Sure. Intros. Uh, 
Ouais. Ouais. Oups. I did not read the statement properly. Controls. Um, PQR, PQP. So this is exact PQR of uh, P and PQ of P. Cool. Sure. Cross PQ, QF, P. Of PQP. PQ, QFP, this is the exact same thing. QF of PQP. That worked. And I really hope we have Toto. No, we don't. Whoops. Okay. Solve the maze. Uh, exact. A fifteen of. Eleven of F nine of F eight of F five of F three of F two of F one. Man, like intro A, one of A, wait, F three shouldn't be here. Oops. Yep, that worked. So here's the interesting thing, which is that proposition world is exactly the same as function words, in that you can think of implications as being precisely functions. So you can like do the exact same thing that we did before. Uh, you can just say exact uh, HP, uh, like as if you're applying the function h to p and it just works because implications are in fact defined as functions that like map proofs of p to proofs of q and like these propositional types are essentially like statements like things that have proofs and when you're like saying that h is a function from p to q you're like defining a map from proofs of p to proofs of q which is the reason why like Proposition world looks exactly the same as function world. Exact. L J H B. Um, I'm lazy. 
is yellow copy paste this. Okay, uh, so this is another thing I should talk about. Notice how this exact proof for like P implies Q implies, uh, Q implies R implies P implies R uh, works the exact same for the next proof. So the reason for this is, as they have said here, like not Q is defined as P implies the false statement, which is which is essentially how like this definition works. Like this is defined as a function. So you can like basically treat is treated exactly like a function. So you can like think of this as like a proof by contradiction. So like we want to prove that uh, so given p implies q and the fact that q is false, and uh, we want to prove that p is false. So instead, we assume a proof of p and find a contradiction. And the way we find that contradiction is like use this function to find a proof of Q. And by definition, not Q means that if you have a proof of Q, then you have a contradiction. So that's how we get the contradiction. Uh, was that understandable? Yes, no, any reactions? Can't hear anything. OK, I'll assume we've understood everything. Oh. Okay. Give us CC, finally. I could do like more of these levels, but like the main things sort of have been demonstrated, I guess. Maybe it's worthwhile to do advanced proposition word. So to prove like P and Q, you want to like split and like do the proof separately. Or you could. Uh, if you know the format proofs are presented, then you can like do this, which also works. So like a proof of P and Q is like a tuple consisting of a proof of P and a proof of Q. Uh, like this is the more computer sciencey way of doing this proof. Like when you do math, you usually just say, OK, so to prove the conjunction of two things, you need to prove each thing separately. 
So we split it into two things we need to prove. And to prove P, we say exact P, and to prove Q, we say exact Q, and that's how it works. But you can like shorten things if you know some things. Uh, yeah, I'll show you the hacky proof first. Uh, I think you can like deduce the non hacky version. Uh, does it not know our intro? Okay. Uh, so I guess the sandbox does not have a lot of things. Uh, let's see if it has this. It does. Interesting. Okay. QR. Exact uh, Q dot one, QR dot two. Oh, we're done. Intros PQ QR. Uh, you can do rewrites with these. Uh, or rewrite with Q. Wait. Why did that not? OK. I understand why that did not work. Uh, that's because we need to rewrite in the other direction. Exactly, Q. Works. Mm, let's do. Let's be lazy. This is. I guess I should show some things. Write all this out. Sure, you can. Okay. Why is congruence closure so dumb? Oh. I guess split. Exact order in the left. QR dot one page. Right. Oh, now we have to do the other direction. If you are. Oh, what's the better name? Q 
such that aqpr dot uh, one and put that dot two works right. This is an in right rule. You're done. You could also like use lots of things, but yeah. Uh, yeah. Also, if you prove a contradiction, then you can prove anything. Like if you find a contradiction. So here, if you like, Let's show you an example of have. Uh, let's do something funny. Uh, okay. Let's do induct on twelve. Oh, right. Yes, this works. Uh, Anyone have any questions about how that worked? You should have questions about how that worked. Anyone? Am I audible? Yeah, no question. So can you guess what happened? here. Any guesses? OK, so false is actually defined as an inductive type that has like no constructors. So when you try to do an induction on a false statement, to prove that, you need to prove all of the cases of that induction, which are precisely none. So once you, when you induct on this, you actually are, you are left with no cases. So the proof actually is complete. It's, are pretty funny, uh, though this is not how you would usually do, do the proof. Usually you would use a tactic called X also, and then like, do like something like this. And that completes the proof. Mm. Okay, so this thing is not true unless you assume that we are in classical logic. We are mathematicians, sure. Uh, most computer scientists don't actually like using classical logic for proof systems because it breaks something called computability. So like proofs have this prop nice property like for the Curry Howard correspondence, which means that every proof, every proof of a mathematical statement corresponds precisely to a to a program in like say lambda calculus. Or in sure, that's one way to put it. 
So you can like switch back and forth from like saying something is a proof and saying something is a program. But if you throw in like classical logic, this breaks down. So uh, this is why a lot of people don't like the law of the excluded middle. Like uh, when you need it, you just throw it in instead of like that being available to the like being part of the base language. So anyway, uh, cases P, wait, cases P, Q. Okay, cases or like I want to do by cases on both of these. So my closure closes everything. In menu, I think. Okay. Okay, that is mostly what I needed to show you from the national number game. I guess I'll show you some automated automation and proofs now. So Let's see. Let me pull up some examples. Okay. Uh, uh, I'm changing uh, what I'm presenting. Uh, wait a second. Uh, let me open something else. Uh, am I looking for? Let's do Lambda Calculus. OK. This is written in a slightly different language from what I was showing so far. This is written in Coq and not Lean, but it's like it uses the same principles and 
like the syntax is also like pretty similar. So I wanted to show this to, sh to give some examples of like automated proofs or like automations in proofs. So uh, this uh, particular program deals with uh, proving that Lambda calculus is sound, uh, which, so let me start by talking about what Lambda calculus is. Mm. How do I annotate? This is so terrible. Uh, oh, I created a jam board. I'm not sure if you guys can see it. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. What? Uh, that was some weird noise. Uh, can you see the Jamboard? Yeah, we can see the Jamboard. Okay, so I should talk a little bit about what lambda calculus is yeah it says access so, denied the jamboard uh it says what like access denied we can't see it i can't see oh, it. You can't. uh can you see it now Oh yeah, we can see it on the board, but like the link doesn't work. Okay, whatever. Uh, I guess I'll talk a little bit about what Lambda Calculus is. So Lambda Calculus is sort of a programming language in some sense. It's like a different style of programming. So it was, it is equivalent to like Turing machines as like a foundation for computer science. It was like, it's, it was like, it, it is like the alternate historical foundation to computer science. And it's actually quite important in like things called uh, in functional programming. So the idea of Lambda calculus is that in Lambda calculus, everything is a function and you essentially define the entire universe in terms of function. So even natural numbers are functions. So the way you represent natural numbers as functions is like they represent how many. So you represent natural numbers by what they do to functions. So what I mean by a natural number doing something to functions is that like a natural number is a function uh, 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 which like uh, is a, uh, so a natural number n takes in some function f and maps it to f composed with itself n times. This is what like applying n means to a function. So this is how you like sort of define natural number. So you start by defining uh, zero as the function. Uh, I'll introduce this syntax. Uh, lambda x dot x, which is called the identity function. So this lambda thing is called the abstraction operator. It like takes in some variable name and you, so that just says, uh, this is something we want to take in as input. And after this is taken in as input, uh, this is what comes out as output. Uh, uh, actually, uh, this is not what zero is. This is, uh, I'm sorry. 
uh, uh, this is the identity function. I, I will say id equals uh, lambda x dot x and uh, zero is actually lambda f dot id which is equal to lambda f lambda x x so the way function application works is that so say you have a function say you want to apply the function zero to the function id which is a perfectly valid thing you can do so you will like th this is the notation for application so this is like saying you want to apply uh, you want to pass id into this expression so what happens is that id binds to the outermost variable which is f and sort of disappears like you substitute id for f wherever f occurs up after the binding which is nowhere so if you apply id to zero you just get uh, the identity function but I guess this is, I guess if you in fact apply any function g to zero, you, uh, you are guaranteed to get the identity function. It doesn't matter that this is identity because uh, that is what's here. And if you apply any, if you apply the identity function to anything, any g, then you will get g back because the g binds to this x and the identity function just says take in some x and spit that back out. And so some more interesting examples would include like the function one, uh, or I guess the, so the function one would be defined as uh, lambda f, lambda x, f of x. And two would be defined as lambda f, lambda x, uh, f of f of x, and so on. So you can, in fact, define the function successor, the successor function s, as like taking in some natural number n, and it wants to output the next natural number. So it would take something like two in and output the next natural number three, which is like three is equal to lambda f, uh, lambda x, f of f of f of x, f, 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 x. So how do you do something like this? Uh, well, first, so any natural number really has to like, take in a function and uh, since it spits out a function, it takes in some variable. And then it like, there's like two ways to write this. You can like say, this is f of nf of x. This is like a decent way of writing. How do you use? move the board whoops uh just pretend there's enough space for another closing brace so what this does is like it takes in some natural number and spits out the f uh so say it took in the natural number two like this function then it like spits out uh lambda f so if you like if you try to compute s of two you get like uh, you put this two here so you get like lambda f uh lambda f lambda x uh f of uh 2f of x and 
2f is uh, precisely what happens when you insert f here, which is lambda x, f of f of x. And when you apply that to x, you get f of f of x. And when you apply f to f of f of x, you get this thing, which is precisely what you want. So, because like n of f is essentially saying f iterated n times. And when you apply an f outside of that, this is giving an f iterated n plus one time. So this is essentially like how you can define natural numbers in lambda calculus. So this is like an idea of how like Lambda calculus allows you to like define arbitrary objects. So another example of a thing you could define is pairs. And like you can essentially define whatever you want using lambda calculus. It's in fact e equivalent in power to uh, Turing machines. So back to our uh, thing. Uh, See. So back to this thing. So here we actually define programs in Lambda Calculus. So first we define expressions. So variables just say, uh, so when you say var x, that means that it it's just referring to the expression x. And when you say abs, abs is like Lambda, it's the abstraction operator. So when you say abs x body, that, that just means like lambda x and body contain body is some expression containing x or like possibly containing x. And application means like uh, when you, for example, n of f. So like n could be an example of e1 and f could be an example of e2. So like the successor function we wrote above could be written, for example, as the expression. So let me give you an. Uh, so is an expression example of an expression. Uh, so the successor that I just defined would be abs. Uh, Uh, let's just say n f x r variables. Um, abs n. This is lambda n lambda f lambda x f of uh, so we are like applying f to whatever the application of uh, this to x is. This was our definition of the successor function, like we previously wrote. Uh, oh, sorry. We don't. We should not be using these commas, and we should put a parenthesis here. Right. Uh, oh, I need one more app somewhere. Oh, we don't have uh, coercions defined yet. So I need to actually write this. Um, sure, whatever. Or actually, uh, I think we will define more notation later. So this is like the raw language in which you could write things. This is like a, just a demonstration of how this language of expressions is like the same as the lambda calculus I just defined. Uh, anyway, we will introduce better notation for writing lambda expression. So substitution is like a 
function. Uh, it's called a fixed point. Fixed points are like a name for recursive functions, which means like the substitution is defined recursively because you want to be uh, able to apply substitution inside substitutions inside of your expressions. So if you have like an abs abstraction and if you're like doing an uh, if you're doing a substitution for y, then you want to be able to replace y inside e1. And similarly for applications. And now there's something called semantics, which is like how this uh, program would be run. So this is something called big step semantics, which means that like the entire program is run at a single step as a, as like a single step. So what this means is that it, it just tells you if like evaluating from this expression to this expression is a valid. So when is something you can do. So eval, uh, let's see, uh, let's keep that. Definition one expression. So let's just define zero and one as we just did previously. So zero was like, uh, Lambda F, uh, Lambda X, uh, X, and one was uh, Lambda F, Lambda X, uh, F of X. And so now you could like claim that uh, evaluating uh, successor at uh, Uh, sub zero one. So you could s say that uh, if you evaluate uh, the successor function at uh, zero, uh, then you will end up with uh, one. This is a this all right, uh, LFX, zero FX, one FX, right? All right, uh, these need to be separate variables. Oh. Mm. Yeah, so let me just group this real quick. And then I can like show you the rest of this thing.
sure you can do these together. Oh, uh, this is kind of a lot more manual work than I want to do at this point. I will prove this using some automation that will be introduced later. So values. So values are things that are like final results of execution. Uh, anyway. All values evaluate to themselves. And eval only produces values. And th this is some notation introduction. So this is, for example, the program lambda x, x of x uh, of lambda x, x of x. This is an example of a non-terminating program. This is something that can be proved. Oh, they actually do define zero and plus one. So I guess uh, I shouldn't have done all this work. Oops. Uh, this is why you should be lazy. Anyway. So this fixed point gives you the canonical representation of every natural number as like n f f of f of x f of f of f of f of x, and this is like applying plus one to zero a bunch of times, and uh, and there's like an alternative representation which is like applying plus one to zero a bunch of times. So we want to prove that 0 represents 0. Uh, so the way you prove that is like, this is like uh, trivially true. And here you can like the assumption simplify constructive. Yeah. This is like also follows from some simplification. And you can like also prove similar facts about addition, like, and addition also works as you might expect it to. Uh, as you can see, this is a lot of the same stuff being done over and over again. Like, e constructor just says like do one step of the evaluation, and simplify says uh, plug the values in like do one step of the substitution and you just repeat those steps and you're done. And so as you might expect, like this is not fun to write a lot of like e constructor, e assumption and simplify. So it turns out that you can like uh, make the program do this by itself. Uh, they do this for multiplication as well here and Prove that multiplication is okay. Uh, and this is like small step semantics, whatever. Uh, this is some typed uh, lambda calculus. I won't be going over that. I want to get to the auto while we still have time. Uh, what was uh, this proof was about the fact that like you can always make like what this file essentially intends to prove is that uh, given any lambda expression, either it is already completely evaluated or you can always like make progress. This is not a trivial result. Like this is a important 
result in computer science. And the fact that you can like prove it using a computer is pretty incredible. Anyway, uh, uh, I think the automation is towards the, okay, here is the automation. These are called L tags. Uh, so what this does is like, it asks uh, the proof thing, uh, like the proof engine to like, look at the state we are in and based on the state, it like matches the state with some possible like, well, like what hypothesis, like it looks at what hypotheses and goals the state has. And like, if it, it, the goal matches any of these states, then it performs the corresponding action. And it like does this un, until like, so T0 only does like this step once and T like repeatedly applies T0. So it actually does evaluation quite quickly. So now like proofs become one-liners. You just do the induction and apply the, the one tactic and you're done. It takes slightly more time, but yeah. You can also like use that tactic T to like uh, prove facts, uh, like prove uh, the simpler facts about like, for example, multi K. Like, let me make a copy of this post T. Uh, whoops. Did we, is that defined in a separate section? Whoops, yeah. This is, uh, uh, this is the type lambda calculus. Whoops. Uh, my bad. I guess you like have to define a copy of T for uh, that thing, which we don't have enough time to cover. But essentially, like you can still like see the power of uh, automation here, like the old proofs for like for example preservation was like this long, which is like mostly applying the same steps. Induct and simplify for the first case. Uh, take this hypothesis and see where it came from. Take that new hypothesis and see where that came from. Apply substitution. Do the substitution here, and you generate some new existential variables, like fill that in with this. Uh, like this assumption fits precisely this goal. So you can like do E assumption. Oops. Uh, I broke my thing. Whoops. Let me reload that. Man. Yeah, uh, right, we were here. So that E assumption happened, and now you, the other thing is also an assumption. And again, for every single one of these things, you want to like take your hypotheses and see where it came from, which is done by the invert tactic. And after that, you like 
just apply constructor here for example like from these two that you can already get this like that that is by definition and the other things are pretty similar you just do the same things okay for these things you need to apply the induction hypothesis but it's like not particularly complicated so like in fact the entirety of this can just be automated by a single tactic t substitution is also like just induct and apply t that's what like almost all of these proofs are except like safety which is you do need to like use some facts about invariance but yeah okay uh i guess we are out of time does anyone have any questions about what we did No. Okay. See you then. I guess I'll go to sleep. Bye. Uh, I'll be back. Yeah.